Right, after all that rather heavy stuff about World War II, we'll go back to ancient history. Here's a rib, um, my day out yesterday at the British Museum. I went to see the uh, an exhibition on on the Romans, and particularly on what it was like to be a Roman legion. Um, the Guardian has a quite nice review of it, which I'll share. It's aimed to some extent at kids, although there's quite a lot of adult stuff as well. It traces the journey of one particular Roman soldier using documents or wrote, uh, through his career as much as possible. Obviously, some of it's lost to time. Um, this review is, is quite useful. I'll just put it up to sort of for you to read. I'm not going to read it out itself, but um, I'll give you my thoughts on it. It's a nice day out to take kids to. If you also enjoy history yourself, it's quite fun because you can do things like pick up um, recreations of a, a legionary shield. You can also realise it weighs a hell of a ton and that you'd feel most unwell after carrying that for a few miles. Um, you can pick up recreations of the kind of weight level a Roman legionary would have to carry in their pack, which is also not, not a great giggle. There were some people finding that quite shocking, as it, mind you. So the weight level of a, a modern soldier is not fun to pick up either, if you've ever done that. Um, there's a height chart showing how tall Roman soldiers had to be. There's um, which had, does have a rather ridiculous claim that the tallest ever Roman emperor, Maximus Thrax, was eight foot tall. I suggest that's a, the Roman propaganda or <laughs> its finest. I'm going to have to look that one up and investigate it, as I kind of doubt that one's absolutely true, as anyone eight foot tall would be unlikely to live a very long time as age ranges for people of very high heights like that tend to be quite short. Um, this picture here is one of is apparently the only complete surviving legendary long shield on display at the exhibition, the text underneath notes it came from Syria, where it had survived during to, to an unusually dry climate and hadn't all crumbled away. You've also got quite a lot of personal details. There's some quite hilarious details from the, the soldier Tarantias writing to his father, asking him to send things like woolen socks and some new sandals and, oh, can I have some more spears as well, Dad, please? It's also got a rather lovely sort of little rat mascot that they use um, to guide the kids around, who do, who's quite cuddly and funny. If you live anywhere in London, then it's well worth taking the kids for a day out there. Um, it's one of the better done exhibitions I've seen. You've also got helmets you can try on. Unfortunately, as I have a very big head size because I have a swollen head, uh, <laughs> because I am so full of ego, I'm such a wonderful person. I couldn't get the helmet on. However, I could lift the helmet, the shield. Um, that's my short thoughts on it. If you've got kids or if you have a kid at heart, it's well worth a, a quick day out. It takes about an hour and a half maximum to go around. As, as ever, there's the inevitable gift shop at the end with the overpriced souvenirs. You can probably skip that if you're an adult, although I warn you, if you have kids, they'll, they'll probably want you to buy something. Um, personally, I'm not going to spend £13 on a tote bag with a, a picture of some Roman generals on it or stuff like that. Um, the price for admission is around uh, is £11 if you have an art fund pass. And if I've, I've never mentioned those before in a video, art passes, art fund passes are well worth it because you can get 50% off a load of exhibitions and stuff all around the country. And they're well worth the discount if you go to a few exhibitions here every now and then in a year. I may put a link to them down the bottom.